Moist filaments, the bane of many, especially for those using sensitive hygroscopic filaments like nylon that just soak up moisture in the air like a sponge. The effect is horrific. Looks like the skin of my great uncle Harold. May God rest his soul. Nylon filament is of course not the only filament to suffer from this issue. All filament is hygroscopic to some degree, and print quality will suffer eventually when it has been stored incorrectly. Filament should be stored in an airtight container, and I would recommend using a suitable desiccant that will soak up the moisture from the air before the filament does. I would recommend using something like a resealable bag or a airtight container to store it. However, sometimes filament needs a little help. Years ago, before there were dryers built specifically for filament, people would use these. This is a dehydrator, and it's a dehydrator for food, and it works really, really well. I still use it, but there are some issues. It's not sealed, and I can't use the filament when it is drying. Enter filament dryers, and specifically Polymaker's new dryer, the Poly Dryer. Polymaker actually came out with a dry box a long time ago. It was called the Poly Box. And it was great, however, it was just a sealed box with roller bearings, a hygrometer, and a thermometer. Nothing fancy. I used one for a long time, however, when I was putting this workshop together a couple of years ago, I sort of made a mistake. Yeah, so I sort of assembled the worktop around the cover, and now I can't get it out, and I don't really want to disassemble it. I still use the base as a spool holder, though. Anyway, the Polybox came out years ago, and since then we have a plethora of drying devices on the market. We have the Sunwoo Filler Dryer S2, the Eson E-Box Lite, Creality Space Pie, and the Solwell Filament Drying Box in the shop right now. Most of these have a power rating of between 35 and 48 watts. This guy, however, is 68 watts, which means more efficient drying, even when it comes to high temperature filaments like nylon or polycarbonate. The design is compact. It can only hold one spool, the max size being 205 millimeters in diameter with a width of 78 millimeters. It is modular, so there is some assembly, but it's really just slotting in parts and literally only takes a moment. Because it is modular, you can use the box as a standalone dry box. It has airtight covers where the warm air inlet is at the bottom, so you can use it as an airtight storage after drying, and if you want to get another box for another project. The dryer can be used in three drying levels. First is low power, which is for PLA, but also for Polymaker's Poly Support and their Poly Smooth filaments. The next level is for higher temperatures, so PETG, ABS, ASA, and TPU. After that is high temperature filaments, nylon, polycarbonate, and also PVA, which is hell for absorbing moisture. Hygroscopicness, it's, it's hygroscopic, the, the hygroscopicness, Hy, hygroscop, hygroscopicity? Is it, is it hygroscopicity? Is it? It is, it's hy hygroscopicity. I'm not saying that, it's hard. The display is pretty minimalist compared to the Sunlu Filler Dryer S2 anyway. I have had this for a long time and it is a great device. It is reliable and has never failed me, but the screen always seemed to have a bit too much information. I'm pretty happy with just having the power level, humidity and drying time displayed. I don't really need to know the amount of seconds left for the process. That always weirded me out about the S2. Unlike that dryer, this does not have a touchscreen, and the buttons are at the base of the short side, which is so much better than the S2, because that was right in the center of the device, and if you needed to interact with that screen, you might just push the dryer over, especially when you had a relatively empty spool in there, or no spool at all. The S2 screen looked nice, and detailed, and easy to use, however, this one just seems a lot more down to earth. There are two roller bearings on the bottom, and you can also use this little spool roller to allow the spool to roll seamlessly for when you are printing it. It is a bit fiddly to insert, but it works just fine. Unlike the S2, this dryer does have a fan at the bottom, with the heating element allowing better circulation and more effective drying. Of course, the poly dryer does ship with a color change silica gel desiccant, which turns light pink when it needs to be dried. And to do that, you can simply just turn on the dryer without filament and let it run its course. The device has two output holes for the filament, both suitable for 1.75mm and 2.85mm filament. It also comes with an extra wide PTFE tube that you can run close to your printer so the filament is not exposed. So how well does it work? Well, I really wanted to test it on some nylon filament that I've had hanging around the workshop, and the workshop has around 40, maybe more percent humidity. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm wasting good nylon. I've, I've heard it before. So I thought that would be the perfect test subject. So 
I got it. I printed a calibration cube and it printed almost perfectly. Actually, this is kind of confusing. I, I'm both impressed and disappointed at the same time. And this is five year old filament, uh, according to the label on this spool. I am impressed how this came out. This is Colorfab's low warp nylon carbon fiber. So if you want something that lasts, this is apparently a good option. Anyway, I looked around the workshop to find some more filament that was hanging around and I found some nice BL filament. So let's try that. So I did a calibration cube print and it came out awful, fantastic. So I put it in the poly dryer for the recommended level. That's level one at six hours and immediately after printed the same calibration cube and look at that, that's considerably better. Then I printed a little container and there is a tiny bit of string, but otherwise it looks perfect. Nice. I wonder how well this will do compared to the S2 though. Modbot did a great review on the S2 last year. You can find the link in the description. And he found an interesting test by another user where they got a sponge, made it damp, weighed it, put it in the dryer, took it out, weighed it again to see which has better drying power. So we did that and we used the PLA level for both dryers and both at two hours. And here are the results. As you can see, there is not a huge difference, but it does show that you can dry faster with the poly dryer. There is one weird thing about this device that I'm a little bit unsure about, and it's small, but it, it nags me. There is a hygrometer here right next to the silica gel compartment, which is great, but it's, it's only four centimeters away from a powered LCD, and yet this LCD is coin battery operated. I get that this is because you can use it as a standalone dry box, but I wish they had an option that charges when the box is linked to the base. Maybe I'm just asking for too much. I hope this product breakdown has helped those of you looking for a new drying device. I am really happy with how this has performed, but if you have any questions about it, then you can write us a comment down below, write us an email or join us on our Discord server. The link is also down below and we'll see you guys next time. Later.